saying that these are the perfect proportion is just ridiculous. Hi everyone, Chelsea Studio here, and today we are talking about body proportions. What's up everyone, welcome back to the studio. So today we are talking about body proportions in relation to drawing. And I just wanna preface this by saying, of course these proportions don't fit the majority of the population. These are just basic guidelines to help you better understand a little bit about the anatomy of the human figure. These are by no means accurate to every single person in the world. Some people are taller, some people have longer torsos, some people are shorter, some people have uh, shorter legs, shorter arms, some people have large heads, some people have small heads. It just varies so much that um, saying that these are the perfect proportion is just ridiculous. What they are is a tool to help you make sure that the proportions in your characters that you're coming up with um, are believable. They have a little bit more of a level of believability to them. While we are going over these proportions today, please keep that in mind. I am in no way trying to hurt anyone's feelings that don't match up to these proportions because I don't even match up to these proportions. These are just a tool, okay? These are not representative of the population of, of the world. It is just basic anatomy stuff. Before we move on, uh, I just wanted to remind you guys to make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I am so excited that I have so many new subscribers and I just wanna say welcome and I really hope that you stick around. Uh, thanks for enjoying my content and thanks for sharing with your friends and your family. That makes me so happy knowing that I'm bringing value to you guys. So knowing proportions in art can be helpful for a lot of reasons. Once you know these proportions at their base level, you can more accurately tweak them and increase the believability of your own characters um, in your artwork. For example, characters like Sailor Moon have extremely exaggerated proportions in that their legs are way too long for their bodies. Whereas other characters like the Guado from Final Fantasy X, they have extra long arms. So by tweaking these proportions, it can help you in your character design and it can help make your characters unique. These also change with age. So somebody that is older is gonna have different proportions from like a child. So the person or the proportions that we're looking at are adult proportions. The first set of proportions we're going to look at today are in relation to the female figure and then we will follow that with the male figure. So let's jump into it. All right, so here I've drawn a head, and this is gonna be the head of Our Lady. So what I'm gonna do is take the measurement of the top of the head to the bottom of the chin, and I'm gonna measure that seven and a half times. So just in America, we're generally taught that the human figure is seven and a half heads high. Some teachers might say there's a difference between male and female, and then if you look into like comic book characters and stuff, that can vary from five and a half all the way up to nine and a half. But today we're just gonna be working with the seven and a half measurement because it's the most common. So I have copied and just drugged down the head, and that's how I'll be doing my measurements, but you can use a ruler, you can measure with your hands, you can eyeball it, it's up to you. Um, but this is just easiest since I'm working digitally. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint and that is this line right here. It's going to be the midpoint from the base of the chin to the ankles, which is the line above the, the base of the feet. And this line is gonna represent the base of the pelvis. So I've turned down the saturation so that I can draw on top of it and you guys can see a little bit better. I'm also gonna change my line to black. Now the width of the shoulders for the female is gonna be about one and a half heads. So what I mean by that is you're going to take the height of the head from the tip of the skull to the base of the chin and that is going to be one head right and then you do that another half times and that's how you get the width of the shoulders 
Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little better. So the neck's gonna extend down slightly behind the edges of the chin and it's gonna come in at an angle. And we're gonna be looking about halfway in between the line for the chin and that first line and that's where our shoulder line's gonna be. Um, sometimes this is higher or lower on people. Then we're gonna draw the rib cage in slightly upper torso area and that's gonna go down to this middle line. We're gonna do it in kind of an, a U shape. The shapes really don't matter as long as you just know the placement. So this is gonna be our hips and our hips need to be slightly wider than our shoulders. So it's gonna be about two heads in width and you can adjust the proportions based on your drawings after. So our natural waist is going to be at the overlap of, of those lines. It can be right on the line or slightly above. I usually draw slightly above. And I'm just going to curve this a little bit. I, it looks a little bit too straight. Most of our female lines are going to be curvy. And I have tucked in the waist a little bit too much here, so I'm going to widen that. Um, most characters have them hyper tucked, but a more natural waist will be wider. Even this is a little thin, but we're drawing characters, so I'm going to leave it. Now our knees are going to be halfway between the base of the pelvis and the top of the ankle. And then you have circles for your knees, but the thigh bone, it actually comes in at an angle. And that's due to how it's sitting in the pelvic bones. So it's actually a socket and it comes out and then down at an angle and you can also see that in muscle structure too so it won't be a line just straight up and down it'll be kind of diagonal on both sides if your knees are together now I'm drawing in the ankles and those will be straight down it's a straight line from your knee to your ankle not like the inner tuck of the diagonals for your thighs if your legs again are together but no matter what your ankle and your knee that uh, shin bone is always gonna be a straight line we're just gonna draw some little triangles for feet because we're not talking about feet today so then we have our shoulder joints that come out just a little bit and then that waist that natural waist that's where your elbows are gonna be and you can actually feel this if you tuck your elbows into your torso and you don't like shrug your shoulders if you kind of lean side to side you can feel that your elbows will touch the top of your hip bones and then your fingertips are about halfway down from your thigh and your wrists meet at the base of your pelvis so if you're standing straight up you can feel where your elbows go and you can feel where your wrists go and again this isn't like everybody's proportions in the entire world not everybody's like this um, some people will have shorter arms or longer arms but just in general. And then it's just a matter of knowing your muscle structure to be able to fill in the body parts, which I can talk about in a later video. But knowing anatomy is super helpful whenever you're trying to draw people because, or actually anything, because it gives you a base structure to go off of that you can then tweak later, which I've talked about already. And then when you're drawing hair, just a, a little note here, make sure that you draw it um, over the skull. So you think of that head shape as the skull of the person. Your hair sits on top slightly above your skull so make sure you draw around it and you don't actually use that line unless the person is bald or has very 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 short hair. And I am definitely stylizing the muscles and, and the shape of this person right now. So if we were drawing a real you know model it wouldn't necessarily look like this. All right, so we're gonna use the same base structure and that's gonna be for our dude. So again, like I said earlier, sometimes people will say that the measurements are different for guys to girls, but in general, just base proportions, they're pretty similar. There's only gonna be a couple changes that you'll see throughout this video. The first being that the shoulder width for the man is uh, opposite. So their shoulders will be two heads wide and usually the hips will be one to two heads wide. So that's the first change that we'll make. Also, your neck's gonna be a little bit wider and the muscles tend to be larger on a guy. Same midpoint, but instead of doing a curvy shape, we're gonna go with straighter lines here. And like I said, the waist is gonna be one and a half head heights. I'm gonna start with a box here and then I will draw around this shape to get the uh, silhouette of my dude. And a fit guy will have a little bit of a waist tuck and it will go out and around the hips because of the muscles that are there. 
So again, this is where your anatomy definitely comes in handy. So I didn't like the way that the box was looking, so I'm trading that out for a little bit more of like a gumdrop shape. And then we are gonna define the pelvis a little bit more with these lines. And then just like for the lady, our knees are gonna be halfway between the base of the pelvis and the ankle. And our elbows are gonna be at our natural waist. And I'm gonna draw him a little extra beefy so that uh, we can just see the differences between the muscles a little bit easier. And then if you're trying to find the pectorals, um, usually they fall on or slightly below that line. That line also indicates where the base of your shoulder muscle can be. If you want to add it, this line is where that V muscle is gonna be. And then the way the muscles curve around the guy is gonna be a little bit more sharp and square compared to the lady. Just like in the woman, we have our wrists that fall at the base of the pelvis. Put in my little Lego hands here. Soldiers are a little too big, feet are a little too small. All of these things are things you can adjust as you move on. And the same thing goes for guy hair. It is going to sit on top, especially if they have longer hair. Um, if they have like a buzz cut or something, just make sure that it goes above slightly from that skull line. I gave him slightly floofy hair. If you're like me and you can't really remember all of that at once, like it's taken me a long time to retain that information and I think the only reason I have is because I taught it for so long. Here are a few things that you can remember whenever you're trying to remember proportions. Number one. Proportionately, legs are the same length as the distance from the chin to the pelvis. The elbows lie at the natural waist. The wrists lie at the bottom of the pelvis. The hands are about half the distance between the length of the thigh. The knees are half the distance from the pelvis to the ankle. And number six is something that we didn't talk about. Your hand is gonna be the length of your chin to your forehead, um, usually stopping slightly above your eyebrow bone. So how does all this help you? Well, let's put these six tips into practice. If you're drawing a person, you've gotta know that people, we are hinges and we can hinge a certain range. So if you know that we can hinge, then you can still use these measurements as you're drawing. So let's say we have a person kneeling, crouching, whatever it might be. I'm just gonna rough in a skeletal structure for this person. Granted, mine might be a little bit more accurate than yours just because I have so much practice, but I can guarantee you that it's not perfect. I tend to draw wide shoulders because I have wide shoulders. So the arm is definitely too long. The hand is probably too small, but we'll see. So to find the correct dimensions, I can hinge because I know that the elbow is at the natural waist. So if I know where the natural waist is, I can put the elbow there and I can just hinge it out as like a curve and guesstimate where that elbow is going to be. So if the elbow was bent, that's why you'd want to know where your natural, natural waist is. But since my elbow is not bent, it's straight. I can use that hinge method to find where my wrist is supposed to go. And then I know that I need to pull the hand in because it was way too long. And now I have a much more proportionate arm for this action pose. Uh, don't forget that the hand is the same height as the chin to the eyebrows. So make sure they match. Um, I'm going to do that digitally here and just show you guys. I can drag that over and physically put my sketched hand. If I was super new to this and I wasn't trained to see, I can put it there and I can see it's a little bit too, too big so I can shrink it and then put it back. And you can just do the same thing to find all the rest of the proportions of your character. And you might have to move things around a lot. If you're not drawing digitally, that just means that you've got to draw light till you get it right. Just draw lightly and then use these guides to help you better do your proportions. And there you have it, proportions of the female and the male figure. 
Um, I hope this helped you guys. I know that right now it probably seems a little bit confusing, but hopefully seeing the example of me putting these proportions into an actual pose drawing uh, helps you out a little bit, helps you visualize. And then um, I know it's a lot, I know it's a lot of information, so if you can't remember all of it, that's fine. Just make sure that you at least try to remember those six tips that I shared at the end which are the ones that I remember and the ones that I use most often whenever I am drawing. As always guys, if you have any suggestions for other future videos that I can bring you, some other value that I can bring you, please leave those in the comments below. Um, would you like to see facial proportions maybe? Um, maybe the breakdown of the face from different angles? Things like that. Um, anything that I can do to help you in your art pursuits, let me know in the comments below. And then if you want to see the art that I make on my own, check out my uh, Instagram and TikTok. And then if you would like to actually purchase any of the artwork that you see on my social media, you can check out my website at chelseostudio.com. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you next week.